kill on the internet to make the weirdest things trend after an episode from a Game of Thrones franchise drops. I swear to God, I've seen the weirdest things trending anywhere from Voldemort, from Harry Potter to freaking thighs. And usually it's Aemon Targaryen who is on everyone's lips. But in season two, episode five, once again, Daemon Targaryen tops the charts with the most talked about topic specifically because of this very spicy scene with him sloshing someone other than his wife. So I'm wondering, you know, who the heck is this person? And it's clearly a Targaryen woman who is definitely not Rhaenyra. I figured it must be someone that the witch placed in his mind to lure him, possibly a sister. And then before my mind could finish recalling whether or not Damon had a sister, the woman drops this line. If only you'd been born first, my favorite son. The Needless to say, this is a bombshell on everyone, including those who, when it comes to Game of Thrones universe, don't mind brother and sister or even uncle and niece pairings as long as they're normal within the Targaryen line. It's just their culture and all that jazz. But the people in this universe also find it cultural to throw kids out of buildings and, um, you know, remove the head portion of a human being from the rest of its mass and put it on a spike like a lollipop for people to watch as they walk by as though it's an ornament. Or to enter into a state that makes you a vegetable while you can assume control of another animal or human being. I wonder if you can turn into rocks. The first thing that we should note is that this is a dream and Damon clearly has been under the influence of the evil Minecraft woman ever since he stepped foot into the castle. The theory that Damon Targaryen and his mommy engaged in keep it in the family activities shouldn't be all that shocking when you consider the type of relationships that are seen as normal or even cultural in the Targaryen family, which does have a tradition of intermarriage to keep the bloodline pure so they can ride dragons and all of that. So far, it seems as though the only speculation people have of this being true are implications from George R.R. R. Martin's books, but there's no actual hard evidence from what I could find that this actually happened. Here, a voiceover from his mother is saying that he's her favorite son, and I wonder why that could have been. Could it have been that he was prettier than his brother, or he had a more natural ability to be kingly and she realized it? It is clear that he loved his mother very much, and he might still have those childlike thoughts and admiration for her since he appeared to have lost her when he was very young. This is clearly more psychological, though, but understandably, we might look at this, and on one hand, we're thinking, okay, so he banged his mom, but the part that sent me is when he decided to feast on her oyster on top of all of that. It wasn't just a freaking banging session. It was a full-on freaking full-course meal. What is it with Matt Smith and him starring in roles where he's an adult banging his mom? I did a review of another movie he was in called The Womb, playing exactly the same role. It was very, um, just wow. And that movie was very problematic because as they use an actual freaking child with a lot of those scenes. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah, they need to seriously investigate the person who was behind making that movie because it was full on soft adult entertainment with a freaking real life child. Anyway. Damon Targaryen is a complicated and morally gray character. His actions and motivations often show a deeper psychological struggle. So his relationship with his mom, going back to the start of it all, might help people in understanding his character and his darker tendencies, but it doesn't mean we should put it past Game of Thrones using this for just shock value. I mean, Game of Thrones is known and famous for its shocking and taboo storylines. Introducing something so controversial would fit right in the show's history of pushing all these boundaries, but this is still a theory. There's no solid evidence in the episodes or in the books so far as I know that confirms that he had a relation like this with his mother. Most of all the buzzing around this theory, again, is just the dynamics of the Targaryen family and people thinking, oh, well, it's possible because, I mean, other things have happened in a similar vein. Honestly, I think it's just the witch's way of screwing with him and messing him up. Then I'll be dead, and none of this will be my problem. It's a pity, don't you think, that you never knew your mother? Excuse me, bitch? For all we know, he probably had a very innocent, loving relationship with his mom, but the witch was somehow able to read his thoughts, taint them, and corrupt them as a way to get back at him, or spreading his own corruption in his attempt to win against his enemies, whether it be for his wife or for himself. Understandably, the dream is fully open to interpretation, but it could also just be imagery or suggestions relating to Damon's past and his complex family dynamics. Damon likes power, and he often uses his flesh sword to get it, which we saw him try to do with Rhaenyra, his now wife, even with Missaria. We see that he has a lot of insecurity 
security and hearing the voiceover of his mom with the icing on the cake being that he was her favorite son or child or what have you. There could be a bit of guilt from his mother dying and him not living up to the image she had of him becoming while also suffering those insecurities of not being born first and not living up to his full potential. His mother planted those seeds in his head. I think this is a testament to how, in a weird poetic sense, mothers end up fucking over their kids with the things that they say to them, especially when it comes to their sons, which is probably another reason why the dream is about Damon being at the mercy of his mother performing those acts on her. And clearly, even though he's an adult in the dream, the mother still seems to have more power over him and takes advantage of that. Now, did his mother do this on purpose to be malicious? Probably not. But just as we see the parallel of Alicent causing the downfall of her son, by putting so much pressure on them to become something she wanted that she and her father orchestrated for him, and then kicking him when he was down and for also shunning the other one for making a mistake, consequently driving him to become the monster that she sees him as. It's possible that Damon is conflicted in this regard, feeling as though he has to live up to what his mother spoke of him. To draw a parallel, the media kind of does this, and it's an indirect way of instigating fights. In some ways, even though Damon's mother can plead plausible deniability, it can be seen as her goading him or slyly insinuating that he should kill his brother because mm, just listen to what she says you are always the strong one the finest swordsman the fearless dragon rider do you hear what she's doing here? Her talking him up like this and indirectly putting down his brother was part of the issue. But I have a feeling that his mother might have been taking advantage of him and he's imagining her saying those things to him because it's probably how she used to talk to him. For him to have a dream like this, it's possible it could have been an accident. <laughs> I don't know if you have an accident about spizzing your mom. It's like having an accident about spoozing your dog. <laughs> Shit's weird. And in some cases, it could be coming from a really dark, unresolved place. But then again, this is the Targaryen culture where they do this, but damn. I kind of feel really bad for him here because now I'm not 100% sure that he wasn't taken advantage of when he was a kid. I mean, even though he kind of tried to do that with his niece, clearly he felt guilt about it and stopped before he did. Either he didn't want to take advantage of her to get to the throne, or he didn't want to take advantage of her because she was so much younger than he was. She was 18 in the brothel scene, but still very much a child to Damon. I would say that he didn't even see her that way because in medieval times kids were being married off before they hit puberty. And so yeah, while it is weird to us, it was seen as completely normal because people didn't live as long. But then, based on the misgivings that Viserys has of marrying a Valeria little girl, little child, it's possible that Damon and his late brother personally are not about that life. It can also be stemming from Damon's own experience. Either way, it's clear that the man is troubled, but then again, so is everyone in this universe. I don't know, man, to Laffy Taffy? your mother? I can hear a lot of portrayals in this show, but this one's just rank. Regardless of all this, Damon's sense of superiority and power largely stems from his belief that he was his mother's favorite child. And I guess in this kind of twisted way, his vision of her doing this with him, or just of her in general, brings him back to the source of his confidence and authority. Boys have secure attachments to their moms, and their moms are basically there to nurture them. When they're growing up, it's their mom over everybody else, including their fathers. And if they lose them when they they are still growing before they're adults, there could be a sense of regressed childhood or underdevelopment. And I might be wrong, but this seems to be what's happening with Damon and why he's having all these conflictions. But I'm no psychologist, so I'm sure we'll understand as time goes by. I know everybody's like, what is going on? What is going on out here? What is going on? I, I didn't... So yeah, Damon knows what he wants and what his mother instilled in him, but it's clear that he also feels a sort of guilt about the path that he's taking to achieve it. Even if he didn't want it and he's doing it with the name of his wife, he's still clearly battling with a guilty conscience. So when in House of the Dragon season two, episode five, he wakes up from this weird witch-induced vision of mommy dearest in the sheets, it can imply him embracing not only the intimacy that he craves for someone to see him as important and strong, but also that he is valuable and worthy of his role as a king. Funny, after all these years though, his mother's words are still haunting him and driving him forward. And that's the power and influence that mothers have. And again, we see the same parallel so well with Allison. But it clearly is an interesting discussion because had she not said certain things or done certain things or neglected her kids in certain ways, this would not have happened. And the same goes for Rhaenyra.